The multiplayer head-to-head -head campaign has started and my god, did we kick this one off with an epic battle. Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another battle taken from the live stream between me and Republic of Play. We have started a brand new head-to-head -head and we play these out for four hours live. I do it on YouTube, Darren does it on Twitch and we play these every single Wednesday at 3pm GMT. I'll leave a link down below to the VOD if you want to check out the first episode which is where we played this battle and yeah, as I said, it was absolutely insane. And again, if you don't know what like we were doing with these head-to-heads, we're doing multiplayer campaigns where I'm playing as the Seleucids and Darren is playing as Carthage, so two huge empires, which will make it really, really exciting because normally you play much smaller kingdoms, meaning we can't do as much, but this time because we're playing probably two of the richest factions in the game we're going to easily be able to fund armies and it's just going to be really really exciting and something that some people might not know is that when you're playing a multiplayer head-to-head -head, whenever the other person fights against the ai i get to take command of the ai's army so you're no longer having to deal with a crappy ai who does stupid stuff i can jump in and i can try and do damage i can try and set darren darren back because every single battle I win every single casualty Darren takes that will affect his campaign in one way or another so it's an amazing way and it makes these head to head so goddamn interesting because whenever we fight these battles I'm always looking to come out on top or even if I'm not looking to win I'm looking to do severe damage so that affects his economy his population his public order everything along them lines and if I can kill generals that creates you know just epic dynamics and there's stuff like that which makes it so exciting and that's just when it comes to me and him fighting as when one of us is VAI. Imagine how intense it's going to be when me and Darren and our huge empires collide. We didn't really have that so much in the previous one because my kingdom kind of fell apart before that. But in this one, I don't see any way that neither of us get like really big. And then when we come to fight, which shouldn't be, you know, that crazy far away compared to other campaigns. It's just going to be insane. The power of the Seleucids versus the power of, Gre uh, power of Greece, the power of Carthage, both on land and sea. So yeah, so this was one of Darren's first battles. We can probably stick it on slow-mo, just let it kind of kick off for a little bit. So this was Darren's first battle. He's attacking the Editani in Spain, which is kind of good for me that Darren's going after Spain first, because in the previous campaign, I played in Iberia. I played as the Arvasi. So I kind of have a good understanding of how a lot of the Spanish units work, whereas Darren is kind of learning Carthage for the first time. So he's kind of seeing their strengths and weaknesses. So not too often like normally what happens is the uh, aggressor always has the advantage because they kind of know their army and the other person doesn't generally know the, the, the units they're using However, in this battle, I kind of have a great idea, and Darren's using a lot of Spanish mercenaries as well. Obviously, being Carthage, a lot of their units do come from the mercenary pool. They get a lot cheaper mercenaries. Uh, so, obviously, you know, I just I just feel like I had a really good advantage going into this battle. You know, the fact that he is playing as, uh, you know, he's got a lot of Spanish units, and I've played a lot of Spanish units before. So that was really, really good. I do have a garrison, but I also have a small force as well inside of the city, uh, which is going to really help me out. And me and Darren are both in these campaigns as well. I'm going to be trying our best to be bringing you guys interesting battles. I think I'm pretty sure I'm only ever going to be roaming around with one army. So I'm going to try my best to avoid two stack cheesing. Um, and yeah, just roam around with one army. You know, playing as Iberia, you kind of had to do it. And Darren had to do it, you know, as Barbarians. But we're both playing pretty elite factions when you get going. You know, when Darren starts to get heavy hoplites and stuff. And obviously, I have a very elite faction as well. So, you know, I think we're both going to be playing kind of a lot more aggressive to hopefully try and create more interesting engagements. Because, you know, I am playing uh, the Seleucids, very, very strong. So hopefully we'll see a lot of really good battles. And I am also fighting Egypt. A little bit of spoiler from the first stream. But yeah, Egypt declared war on me. So there's going to be plenty of battles like so. So I'm going to kick this one off. Um, I have actually a couple units of cavalry in this battle, which was really nice. And I'm going to throw this one in, charging away at his lines. And actually doing a pretty decent amount of damage. Most of the damage came from them javelins. But my main goal here was to try and just, you know, whittle down this flank as best as I could. You know, just try and harass him. And it did kind of work. It forced him to bring his cavalry around, which was really useful. He also tried to harass my uh, men on the boats, which I didn't know until I looked at this replay. Um, I, I didn't even see this cavalry charge me. I was so focused at this that his little ambush coming out of the woods worked so effectively. 
And then that allowed him to come all the way back. And then all of a sudden, I noticed the cavalry now. But I'm kind of in a very tricky situation because I've put barricades here. So I can't escape through this street back into my rank. So this unit of cavalry, I guess, could have come down here. Probably wouldn't have actually been a bad idea, if I'm honest, to bring it back through this rank. But I actually believe I have uh, manhole uh, traps right here as well, which is probably, I think, the reason why I did them. So basically secluded my cavalry to having to charge his. And my cavalry obviously isn't that great. I think Darren has some Carthaginian horses. He has these lightly Spanish skirmisher cavalry as they collide. And then he also has these heavier melee cavalry. And the... Um, what is this? Yeah, this, I mean, this is still Carthaginian shot cavalry. But this cavalry, his general unit, is heavy Punic horse. And they're really, really good. Like, ultra good. So, yeah. I don't think anything I have at my disposal will be really helping. But I am getting my slingers to train their arc of fire over here. Again, trying to whittle down this horse. Because as the battle develops, I you know my weaker men are going to get tired. They're going to get, you know, less effective. And then Darren and his numbers can really start to come in. And his quality will start to show. So, I want to try and whittle down this horse as much as possible. As soon as possible. Because the sooner it does go down, and the more I kill, the less effective it will be in the late game when gaps really start to appear. I and mean, as you can see, he's managed to catch my general here. But I, I have been, I think, the faster one to get infantry over here. Some of my marines are moving over um, as fast as physically possible around the huts. They're going to try and get their asses over to the fighting and help out here. We're both popping our rallies, our inspires. And this is really risky. I mean, it's more risky for Darren, right? Because... I don't really care if the Elitani general lives or dies. If I lose this battle, the Elitani is done for anyway. So it makes no difference to me. So I can kind of be a lot more aggressive. And I can try and get a lucky kill off on Darren's general. Because if I kill one of his generals, that's massive. That causes political strife within the campaign. It, you know, takes away a, a general from leveling up. Because level, you know, having level 10 generals and just higher level generals makes a huge difference. So whenever you lose a general, it's, a, you know, very painful for your army. So Darren is going to pull back here, seeing my infantry coming around the corner. I was going to try and throw some javelins to weaken him down a little bit. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, Darren makes the bandages to break my cavalry. He just pulls out of this engagement, only taking a handful of losses. So overall, that was a pretty good cavalry engagement, engagement for him. But I also, you know, did kind of tire out a few of his horses and took down the majority of the non-general bodyguard. So whilst this is going on, Darren is going to push forward now. And you can just see the rain of javelins I have. It's actually absolutely disgusting. So I am just blasting away on his mercenary units who are not having their shield down and getting wiped out from the javelin fire. So as you can see, the men I have are pretty goddamn trash. Um, but luckily, I know for... Oh my god, he's got skewered. I know for a fact that the, uh, a large portion of these units Darren are using aren't that great either. In the previous campaign when I was the, uh, the Arbasi, I used these guys. And I know their strengths and weaknesses from using them. And I, I, yeah, I definitely knew that, you know, Javelin Fire will definitely bring them down. Like I got punched him and just sliced brutal. So yeah, I know these guys aren't going to be like cutting through my line extremely quickly. I can definitely, even though I haven't got the best units... They're still going to be fine. And realistically, the main killing prowess of this army is going to come from my slingers and my javelins. So as long as these guys can hold, the slingers can just fire away and rack up hundreds of kills on his men. You can see I'm trying to focus down these javelins now as well because the javelins will rip through my line. You know, every javelin can do a lot of damage compared to, you know, some sword infantry could just lose. So that's where you can see a lot of rocks coming in, trying to bring these guys down as fast as possible. Whilst it's going on as well, Darren has sent three units of infantry around this corner as well. There's some of his hoplites here trying to break down my barricades and stakes. So that should keep him busy for a little while, which is nice and, and buy me some time. He's going to be pushing some more men around here, but he's got a very concise attack. I was surprised he didn't try and go through at least you know one or two more avenues however i think it's definitely a smart move to try and brute force your way through here i mean realistically maybe these guys could have gone down this route uh would have been good like you got one unit going down there and two going down there to try and break through but with us being in the early game and units not having a lot of morale at this point i don't think it's not i think it's actually a good idea to keep your army somewhat together because units do tend to break early on 
you know, even even like Greek, uh, you know, medium to heavy hoplites break early on pretty easily if you just envelop them and when they get tired as well. So I think keeping his army close together was actually a pretty smart move because it means he can reinforce. And realistically, he does have the quality advantage. So eventually he will end up breaking through my battle line. You know, he will grind through. But my slingers are doing a lot of damage because of that. Maybe if he attacked from multiple directions, he could have used that to his advantage. And you can see right here, he has a unit of very heavy phalanxes right here. These aren't sacred bands. No, these, these aren't sacred bands, I don't think. Um, but yeah, you can see like his super heavy phalanx there. He has two units of them. Um, and they're the ones just going in. I think these are just the normal um, Polybian, not Polybian, uh, Punic hoplites, if I'm honest. But I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, you can see these going in. I think maybe it's stat wise. Yeah, yeah, these are just normal ones. These are just his like standard hoplites. Um, which I think definitely if he would have had more of these uh, in his army here, he would have been doing so much. He would have just ripped through me. Because, again, you don't really think of Hop Lights as doing a lot of damage. But they, they honestly do because they don't take much damage. So when they're exchanging kills, the Hop Light generally does chew through enemy infantry pretty quickly because they're not, they're not losing men. So they're fighting at a really high effectiveness. Um, so right now the battle is going on. All of my slingers are just hammering his back line. You know, this is what's going good for me. And I'm definitely, you can see that the heavy, consistent missile fire has really broken away a large portion of his smaller infantry. However, Darren is going to be aggressive with his hoplite. And again, this is another thing that's so good about the hoplites is you think of it as more of a defensive testudo, like kind of a defensive line, but it can push. It can really push uh, against, you know, weaker infantry because, you know, my weaker infantry is... You know, what's it going to do? It's kind of loose in uh, formations. However, by doing this and by focusing a large portion of his force here, my slingers have a perfect angle just to continue to hammer away and rack up hundreds of kills. You can see my general moving in here as well. Uh, I wanted to try and get a nice little flank around onto his units there, try and envelop this, uh, this phalanx. Because I saw it breaking through and I was like, if that continues to go through, I'll be in such a hard position and maybe I can envelop it completely because I think I do have some men, um, yeah, pretty close. I've, I've basically surrounded it already. I've closed off this gap somewhat. There's like mixed fighting here. So if I could break this unit of heavy phalanx, that would just be absolutely huge. But it does obviously cause a big risk with my general. At the moment as well, Darren is using his cavalry to chase off my uh, my skirmisher horse, which again is pretty good for me. I can continue to throw javelins and get these guys to chase me. That definitely came out great for me. Uh, and then I decided to maybe start pushing along this flank as well, trying just to... Because I wanted to kind of keep this unit in place here. So I thought the best way of doing that is just throwing a small unit of marines against it. And then that keeps down 300 men whilst I focus there. However, my morale, a lot of these units are just uh, garrison armies. So they're not going to be, you know, a staple front line. And that, you know, the quality of Darren is really starting to show in his army, his hoplites, his general, and everything else. However, I return it by managing to rout this unit of phalanx, which was huge, absolutely massive. Because it allowed me to basically fill the gaps in my battle line. Oh yeah, something I should mention as well is we're using the experimental uh, battle patch that the, D the DEI team are working on right now, that Cam's working on. And as you can see, you now have some new tool tips and a revamp in the way morale works and, uh, and fatigue. You can see on the tooltip of the unit, it says eager. This unit is eager, so it's fighting at 85 to 100% of the unit's morale. If I go over to a unit that's taken a lot of casualties, you can see it's waving, ravering because they've taken so many casualties and their morale is dropping heavily. You can also see that they're winded, so they're only fighting at 80% of their strength. I'm sure if you find a unit that's exhausted, they're, they're fighting at like nothing. Yeah, a lot of these units are fighting, but you can see the difference now and it actually shows it in the UI, which is really, really nice. So if your units get a lot, if your units get exhausted, uh, they fight a lot less effectively, uh, which is really cool. I, lo I love that, but it's kind of more of an emphasis on that. And once again, Darren's having to be a bit aggressive because, again, a lot of his mercenary weaker units are breaking now just because of the constant slinger fire. It's actually disgusting how well uh, these slingers did in this battle. Um, that's forcing him back in. Yeah, breaking that phalanx at that perfect time has allowed me to basically reinforce the line. I am throwing a lot against this one unit of phalanx, which is really bad of me. Because obviously this phalanx is just going to hold all day. Uh, you know, this is exactly what they want me to do. I, I wish I would have, like, really have looked at this because 
yeah, two more units could have gone around here and reinforced this section. I could have maybe have dispatched units elsewhere, even broken through my own barricades. I did, however, manage to get a unit of mob uh, out through this side and attack some of his missiles back here. Again, just to cause him some issues, cause him some micro issues, uh, which hopefully you know will help me somewhat. And it also brings his general around around because his general's having to move all the way back here to hit him in the back. And as you can see, looking at the battle, like <laughs> neither of us really have a lot left at this point. Darren's attacking me from the rear, and he has actually managed to break through with a unit of his medium phalanx infantry. Luckily, they're not in phalanx for me, but. Uh, even still, you know, they're doing good. So I'm trying to envelop this. I've got my general hitting into the back of them. I've got some slingers going to envelop them. But I haven't really got any great units to, like, actually smash them with everything I've got. So this unit is going to hold, you know. It's a fresh unit of infantry, um, and they're, they're keeping their own. And he's also bringing up another unit of militia to reinforce. And these guys literally can't come any faster because if he loses his rear defense if he or his rear attack i can then focus everything forward and as you can see advanced power is so even right now i am cutting my way through this position bit by bit um and it's actually being really effective for me to push forward but my men are really close to breaking as you guys saw in the previous head-to-head -head, like units barbarian units break very quickly when a mass route comes out and Darren is going to charge in his cavalry now looking to try and win this rear assault so then he can push forward. But luckily I managed to bring back two units of my marines who are very, very, you know, they're underrated units for sure marines and they can hold positions very effectively. So I've managed to actually tie down his cavalry and cavalry now take a lot more damage pulling out in this ex experimental build. So you have to be a lot more cautious with where you deploy them. So as you can see, he's gonna, Darren's going to lose a lot of horses. And when these horses are kind of low already, um, it's going to be really effective with me. And then my cavalry, which came back from over there, reinforced and managed to route his horses. So right now, things are looking good for me. I just managed to route this rear assault, which is huge. I've managed to start breaking other units. Uh, you think how like good this is going for me? Darren is breaking through these barricades, and if he can get through these barricades, that's going to be a little bit shaky because he can come round. But right now, things are going amazing. I mean, I, I don't really have a lot of quality left, but I still have a lot of men. And Darren's having to throw in his weakest units right now. And it's really coming down to this unit of Galatian mercenaries he has and this unit of hoplites. You know, these units are the ones holding the goddamn line. And again, they're not really fighting the best quality, best shock infantry. They're fighting the lowest tier of my men. So uh, besides this unit, this unit is like, okay. But besides that, you know, things aren't great for me. We both only have a unit of cavalry left. I can see Darren moving around here. And I really messed up here as well. This cavalry is on skirmish mode. So it started running. You can see I clicked to go this way. And because it was on skirmish mode and Darren came in, it pushed the cavalry out more. I was hoping I could bring both these cav horses in um, a bit more effectively. Um, and now I'm going to try and get... I actually get a really nice charge off on Darren's general right there. But again, this cavalry unit is so good. Um, but it's very hard to kill it. But Darren is going to try and pull out of this fight. Again, taking more casualties because pulling out with cavalry is very costly. But he is going to be able to get him out there and I'm just going to pursue him. I know if I can break Darren's general, I'm going to win this battle right here, right now. Because my front line... I've got missiles, I've got really weak infantry, and Darren actually does have a decent amount of numbers here. Especially over here as well, like his unit is surrounded, but it's only surrounded by slingers. I've had to send back a unit as well to prevent him from enveloping me here, so we're currently fighting in the town. So this battle is so close right now. Um, he managed to get his general out of here, but I'm really close to breaking these phalanxes. And if I can break these phalanxes, I can just push, push, push. But Darren's going to go ahead and commit a unit of swords here. But they're not braced, so my cavalry can inflict pretty heavily. But everything's so messed up in this path fighting that it hasn't gone as effective as I'd want. So right now, this battle is on a knife edge. Bands of power is slightly in favor of Darren at this point in the engagement. But if it's like I'm just going all out. Because if I can stop Darren here, this will set him back like five, six, seven turns in Spain. It will allow the Spanish factions to form alliances. Like, if I if I can slow him up in Spain, that's absolutely huge. Because it allows the AI to build more armies. It allows them to prepare the defenses, form defensive alliances, and, and basically act as more of a block. So, you know, as much I need to do everything I can here to affect Darren on the campaign, let alone having to re-recruit men. Uh, if he loses his general, that's huge. But my morale is wavering. Darren has, you know, his quality of his troop is finally starting to shine through as these Iberian militia break my garrison and the townsfolk are running for their lives. 
He's also going to take this capture point as well, which is going to take away a morale bonus I have, which is going to be catastrophic. But look at his general. His general is so goddamn low. If I could break him, that would be an easy mass route. Look what's breaking. I've managed to break the hoplites. I'm fighting away this heavy melee infantry. And then he only has this left. He has some reserves coming in who came back from routing. His general just making out of that. Literally 10% morale and surviving. So frustrating. And at this point, my cavalry is just stuck in here. It's all or nothing at this point. Darren is bringing over his infantry now to envelop my front line. And you'll basically see all of my weaker units break away. And I think I have like one unit. This is like I had three units of good, like passable infantry in this battle. And you can see that, that that's one of them. This is, I think, another one of them, and the other one must be dead already. But even still, like, if I could break this, my cavalry can rotate around, maybe hit these guys in the back. It'd be huge. It's just a matter of time. Will my men hold? You can see how close this battle is. And I did indeed break them. Killing that unit was huge. Really, really big. However, Darren now once again throws in his general, and I take the bait. He charges me right here really effectively, getting ready to break my slingers. And I charge in after him. I just see red. He breaks my sli he breaks my slingers, um, but I just charge in here. Maybe there was more of an effective way. Maybe I could have come down to break these guys. Maybe I could have come round and hit their men in the back. But I saw his general, and I like I want him dead. You know, like killing generals is huge in Divine Earth and Terror. So I go right after him as fast as I can, and once again he escapes by the skin of his teeth, and I'm kind of in a really tricky situation. However, I did just manage to break a large portion of Darren's skirmishers. So he really does not have a lot not left right now whatsoever. I've got one unit of good infantry that's winning the morale fight. Right now as well, his militia is starting to waver. If I could cause a mass rout right now, that would be absolutely huge. This unit of swords is coming around to help. I'm so close to breaking this infantry, freeing up my general to rear charge into anything else. I, I need this to hold and I need to break this ASAP. But I think at this exact moment, my general dies. He gets slain. I mean, he's 17 men left. It was a shame that he went down. But yeah, my general breaks and everything else just dissipates. But look how insanely close that was. If my general didn't die, um, I think these units would have routed within, you know, within a minute or so. Uh, and that would have just been huge. Uh, I don't think these guys would have routed if my general didn't die. And I think I would have got that. It was just, yeah, I mean, it was obviously very likely to happen when I only have 17 men left in the unit. It was just unfortunate that I couldn't hold on for a little bit longer. So Darren does claim victory. He kills the Elitani, takes the grand city of Ars, and yeah, it, uh, it was brutal. Yeah, you can see that's all I had. That's all I had in a garrison force. But I think I did very good for how little I had in that battle. I mean, obviously Darren's army, you know, is basically militia, but that's kind of what you want to do in the early game is just get militia to save population and money. And obviously a lot of these units you're going to replace anyway, so... Yeah, I killed a lot of his men, so that's good. You know, I made him, you know, waste population out here. I made him waste money by recruiting these units and mercenaries and stuff. So, overall, a pretty good battle for me to kick off the head-to-head. -head. It was so close, uh, which is really, really fun to have a battle like this so early on. Because, you know, a lot of the time, you're just kind of given what you, you... You just get what you're given, you know. Like, I'm fighting Egypt, but if Egypt don't send armies at me, then, you know, I, I can't perform, you know, as ba like close battles like this. You kind of just have to hope... That the AI is playing smart and you're throwing forward. And hopefully more battles like this will occur. Because as I said, I'm personally going to be roaming around with one stack armies. Unless I know the, the enemy and the AI has multiple. Then I'm going to obviously couple up my forces. But you know, garrison fights, I'm going to be using one army. Uh, and, and everything along them lines. Just to try and create more of an interesting dynamic in the campaign. Uh, I'm sure Darren's going to be doing the same. I mean, you know, he didn't have to take this battle if we didn't want to. And he did. We fought another battle later on which where he was... You know, it was very much 50-50. Um, so I'm going to be trying to obviously replicate that, like we do, um, for sure, for sure. And I think now we're playing stronger factions. That will definitely happen. Unfortunately, you can't see how many kills my slingers got, but I assume literally hundreds because they did great. And yeah, this unit of swordsmen did amazing as well. My general getting over 200 kills. He was a valiant last stand indeed. For Darren's forces, his hoplites. As I said, like, 
You don't think of hoplites as killing units, but they really can. When they're fighting like inferior units, they can just push through them and do so much goddamn damage. Uh, and obviously his very heavy uh, Galatian infantry as well. Maybe he's a Golic. I don't actually know. Doing a pretty good job. But yeah, I kind of... The good thing is about this is like, I know the quality of these infantry. I know how good these horses are. I know they're not very good. So I, I definitely had an advantage going into this battle knowledge-wise. But obviously Darren had the superior army. Um, but yeah, amazing first battle gg2 darren indeed make sure to tune in every single wednesday 3 p.m gmt you can catch a vod up i'll leave a link down below to the playlist and i'll see you guys in the next one